A year ago, I posted my very first Skyrim video, transforming it into the grim and hallowed world of Dark Souls. But since then, two things have happened that have led to the creation of this video. Number one, there has been an enormous amount of groundbreaking mods that released that I'm going to show off today. And number two, I just think I can do a better job at making a better video. So in this episode, I'm going to show you a collection of mods that not only transform the visuals into something that resembles the foreboding lands of Lothric and Lorien, but a collection of gameplay, sound and UI mods that make the combat and exploration of the game almost indistinguishable from a Dark Souls title, to a level that was never before possible. So join me as we transform Skyrim into Dark Souls, but properly this time around. Before we get into the bulk of the mods in this video, I have quite a special announcement for the channel that has been in the works for a while. One of the most common questions I get in the comments and on Discord is, Hey Burns, I'm planning on buying a PC, I want to run the type of mods you are, what specs do I get? Well over the past couple of months I've been partnering with Apex Gaming PCs to bring out my own line of custom gaming PCs fit to the exact specifications I'm running. For those of you who are moving from console to PC for Skyrim modding, or just want to play it safe, you can pick from any of the three options available in my line, and use code BURNS site-wide for 5% off all products. <laughs> I want to say a massive thanks to Apex Gaming PCs for working with me to put this together, but with that being said, let's jump into the mods. Now to begin this video, we're going to start with the world around you, and that means covering everything beginning with the visual mods, and also some creatures, some straight from the series, that will really bring the atmosphere which we'll build upon after. So let's start with the visuals. First we need a good EMB that will bring the grim and hallowed tone of the Dark Souls universe, and that's going to simply be the ominous EMB that I've used for various game changes in the past that still remains to be the most aesthetically pleasing for a Dark Souls playthrough. Obsidian Weathers is going to be paired with this in which is so far my weather mod of choice and will work to bring a gloomy atmosphere with the help of supreme and volumetric fog, which just adds an extra layer of depth and mysticism to your surroundings. Next is Dark Forests of Skyrim. As you might have guessed, a mod designed to replace the trees of the province with dark gothic alternatives and will help lay the foundation for the habitats many of our creatures will reside. So let's go through some of those, why don't we? Ancient skeletons to provide some similarities to hollowed undead. Iron golems for a brooding, boss-like encounter. War revenants to battle against the spirits of conflict. And crystal golems for the deepest depths of the blackest reach. Mimics to trick the player into an unfortunate demise and Grave Lords for a horrific harrowing encounter, Bone Colossus for an undeathly necromantic altercation, and finally Ancient Norse Sentinels for a larger than life battle guarding those areas which hold the mightiest of treasures. All of these mods together form the base tone of our Dark Souls world that we'll be adventuring within, to give you not only a fresh look to Skyrim's landmass, but some deadly boss-like encounters to populate it and will at least lay the foundations for some of the revolutionary new gameplay mods which we're going to cover next.
Now the gameplay section of this video is arguably the most important and will build upon the combat video I just released. So for those who missed it, let's start with a quick recap of our first mod. True Directional Movement A truly revolutionary all-in-one combat mod which comes with a bunch of awesome features, many of which push us one step closer to a Dark Souls gameplay experience. And these come as follows. Fully unlock directional movement when in combat. Target locking and enemy floating health bars. Boss health meters, along with projectile aim support, and a bunch of small additional features. Next is Sky SA, again still quickly recapping from the previous video. And what this mod does is serve as a framework for modern attack commitment within Skyrim. Meaning motion data is tied to the combat animations themselves, forming a new tactical base for our Dark Souls gameplay. And this paired with the Ultimate Dodge mod creates a sort of basic skeleton for the next mod, which originally inspired this video to be remade. And that's the Elder Souls Collection by Mike Nike, which aims to utilize Sky SA's framework in order to recreate the same combat animations from Dark Souls games. First we have one-handed blades, such as daggers and one-handed swords which have their own moveset compared to the slower weapons such as maces and war axes, which are unique too. For two-handed greatswords, you now have a separate animation to battle axes, which currently share animations with war hammers, which creates a very distinct variation between weapon classes included in the base game. Additionally, the author has also created a sister mod, Elder Souls Sweep Attacks, to implement the sweeping damage feature seen in many modern games, in which you're able to hit multiple enemies at once if they're in the expected radius of that swing. And by using the Elder Souls moveset along with Animation Motion Revolution to fix displacement, we now have a pretty convincing replication of Dark Souls-esque animations, which we're now going to build upon with a few extra features. First is Flinching, a small script-free mod which implements small flinches to both enemies and the player when hit with an attack to simulate an actual satisfying response to combat, which goes hand in hand with Zed Slice's backstab and parry system. To implement both of the most satisfying combat features available in Dark Souls games into Skyrim in pretty much exactly the same way. But what good is all these mods if the Stanima system remains as it does in vanilla? Well that's where Dark Souls Movement and Stamina Regen works to implement a much faster Stamina Regen system similar to that of Dark Souls, to better make use of dodge and blocking mechanics. And while speaking in the dodging ballpark, we're also going to be using dodgeable projectiles, which slows down magic and arrow projectiles just enough to give you a chance to dodge out of the way or block the attack easier when in crucial combat situations. These mods all together form the bulk of our combat engagements, however that is not the end of our gameplay mods. Along with the various combat overhauls, there are also some additions that change the very core gameplay systems themselves, beginning with Dark Souls Experience, a mod which overhauls leveling to work the same way as spending souls in Dark Souls, by removing the XP gain from normal gameplay and only allowing you to advance skills by spending your gold upon sleeping, and this is designed to go hand in hand with Dark Souls Death which then makes it so upon dying you drop all your gold on the ground and you have to respawn and travel back to your grave to retrieve it. And finally is Dark Souls Estus, which disables both health and magical regen and adds an Estus system which gets replenished upon sleeping, of which the Estus quantity gets increased as you progress through your levels. And with every single one of these gameplay mods working hand in hand, you actually already have a system that would sell as a pretty complete Dark Souls overhaul that would rival even the closest of Soul-like clones. But even with all that being said, that's not even all of the mods we're featuring in this massive overhaul, because the next section is going to cover an area that is equally as recognised as Dark Souls Combat. Now while Skyrim's UI is pretty okay, we do have a plethora of mods available that will pretty much match Dark Souls' heads-up display along with a few extra enhancements. So let's start at the beginning with the main menu. Dark Souls' main menu theme is a mod which changes the default Skyrim main menu music to Dark Souls 1's opening theme, but we're really just using this as a complementary mod to the Dark Souls 3 main menu and font replacer, which not only makes the main menu look like you're about to play Dark Souls 3, but changes the in-game font to match the one used in the game. Now for the in-game UI. As a base, I'm using Nordic UI, which I covered in more detail in the recent combat video, 
but it works as a nice reskin for the general system, inventory and Magicka menus. Then we have UI Sounds of Dark Souls, which does exactly what you would expect. Changes the sounds that play when you navigate menus to those used in the Dark Souls series. And even for general use, this is a pretty nice fresh change in my opinion. But now for your HUD. And as usual, I'm using the customizable UI replacer set to the Dark Souls theme in order to reskin your health, magicka and stamina bars to the Dark Souls 3 textures and layout. And additionally, is the Souls Quick menu mod, which allows you to have hotkeyed items ready to use at hand in the exact same way you would in Dark Souls, and this works especially well in combination with the Dark Souls Estus mod we previously covered. Finally, is Skyrim Souls, unpaused game menus, which makes it so the game does not pause when navigating any type of menu, in the exact same way it would in Dark Souls, which then plays well with Souls Quick menu as it encourages you to set up quick change slots for weapons and spells to flick between in combat. And with that, we now have a fully overhauled and fully functional Dark Souls user interface. Now, weapons and armor for Dark Souls mods are kind of a weird grey area, because while there is a bunch of singular mods available on the Nexus to cover individual armor sets, there is one mod which, well, covers them all. But we'll touch on that in a moment because it's actually a little tricky to find, so we're going to come back to that later. But one weapon pack that isn't tricky to find and is definitely Dark Souls inspired is Animated Armory. This mod adds a whole bunch of new weapons to both the crafting and level list that not only come with cool new designs, but have completely new classes, which in turn means they come with completely new animations. So let's go through each class of the new items you'll be using and also fighting against. Starting with Rapiers, which are lighter, more agile swords used for parrying. Pikes are a larger two-handed weapon that is used for keeping enemies at a distance. Halberds, a similar weapon that is designed to both stab and slash enemies. Quarterstaffs, a blunt pole-esque weapon for battering opponents. Next is Claws, a small and short range but quick and agile class of weaponry. And finally, Claw Whips, to ensnare your enemies in a stinging snap. All of these new weapons in their respective classes can all be crafted or looted in the same material types as vanilla weapons, and add a great addition for our Dark Souls themed world. But now let's change paces back to the Dark Souls weapon and armor pack, including an immeasurable amount of armor designs. We have the Alva armor, the Burial Knight, the Dancer's armor and weapons, Dark Wraith armor and weapons, Desert Pyromancer, Dragon Slayer armor and weapons, Ornstein's armor, Drake Blood armor and weapons, the Drang armor set, the Elite Knight armor, Lothric Knight armor and weapons, the Fallen Knight set, the Faram set, Firelink armor and weapons, the original Knight armor, Leonard's armor, the Looking Glass armor, the Nameless Knight set, the Outrider Knight, Ringed Knight armor and weapons, along with the Sunless set, the Undead Legion's Abyss Watcher's armor, Wilhelm's armor, Artorius's Wolf Knight armor and weapons, and a bunch of additional weapons and shield that just add to diversify the massive collection of Dark Souls armory. And with that being said, it's now time to tie all of the changes we've made in this video together with the quest mods of this transformation. Now for this video I wanted to touch on three entire quest mods actually. The first two are slightly smaller, but still massively rich in content, and I imagine this is serving as sort of your DLC expansion packs for your Dark Souls game. So we'll start there, with both Unslad and Dark End. These mods are about as far apart in setting as you can get, but that's why they bring completely different experiences. First is Unslad, a mod which is inspired clearly by the painted world in the Ashes of Arian Dell, and will take you to a new world quite literally frozen down to its core, where you'll follow the story of a girl who is cursed with the blood of a dragon. I won't spoil too much from this, but if you liked Ashes of Ariandel, you'll enjoy this as your first small expansion. 
Next is Dark End, a mod which we covered as our main quest in the original video, but this time serves as another expedition amongst our main journey later on. Dark End is a grim, foggy abyss riddled with horror and dark gothic themes. You'll journey throughout Pharos in order to face the Lord behind all the torment. Dark End thematically and in terms of level design is an absolute masterclass in replicating a Dark Souls inspired land within the Skyrim engine and has always been one of my favourite experiences I've had playing a mod for the first time. With both of these two quest mods installed, you'll already have enough content to facilitate an entire playthrough that suits the mechanic and visual changes we've made along the way. From venturing down into the cold crypts beneath Castle Unslad, to engaging in a pilgrimage into the plague-ridden towns and hallowed castles of Pharos, that could easily satisfy a game-long playthrough but yet it still pales in comparison to the sheer scale of our next mod, which will serve as our main quest and our biggest mod in this entire video, and that is the quest mod Vigilant, which aims to take you on a journey to delve into the deepest depths of Molag Ball's realm of oblivion, to put an end to the danger problem once and for all, in about as a Dark Souls way as you can get. And that's going to complete this video. With every single one of the mods featured in this episode, we have managed to completely transform Skyrim's world, combat and gameplay mechanics into something that seems about as close to Dark Souls as possible right now. And I'll be doing a playthrough of each of the quest mods with this setup soon over on the second channel so head over there if that interests you. And with that I want to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed feel free to subscribe if you want and leave your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.